uh, there are volunteers who uh, work very hard on making High Point a better place for all the residents. I want to thank our um, speakers tonight, uh, Representative Jay Inslee for coming. Um, and in a few moments, we'll have uh, Joe Lynchmore, who is representing the Rob McKenna campaign. Um, so without further ado, I'll give the mic to a member of the High Point Neighbors Association, Bob Ford, who will not be present. Thank you for coming. We are really fortunate to have uh, Congressman Inslee here. This may be the last time Congressman Inslee comes to a forum like this as a congressman, because he has uh, retired full time to campaign full time. Uh, Jay Inslee grew up in a White Center in this area. I went to, um, Ingram High School. I, I, maybe you'll explain how you grew up here and went to high school there. Um, and has become a leading politician in the Democratic Party. This race for governor is watched nationally. Uh, everyone receives two strong candidates and everyone sees it as an important turning point, one way or another. Uh, Congressman Inslee has served uh, in, in Congress representing Central Washington and representing Western Washington. This gives him a, a neat perspective. He's, uh, he's written a book on America's clean energy possibilities, Apollo's Fire, and he's played basketball in the White House. So um, I guess the other room is, is, is where we could have held this event and play basketball. Uh, Jay, would you like to join us? We'll, we'll have a well, good evening. Uh, my name is Jay Inslee. I am absolutely thrilled to be here. Uh, this is a little bit like coming home close a little bit. I was born in a Swedish hospital and spent a good part of my youth uh, living in White Center. I went to Shorewood Elementary School and Cascade Junior High School. My dad taught at South High School and Gar Garfield High School. So this is kind of my old stomping grounds. And I am very excited to be at this center, and I'll tell you why. Uh, I learned uh, everything I know in a center like this, at Red Shield Boys and Girls Club in White Center, Washington. And I learned, I learned uh, teamwork, I learned uh, respect for my elders, and I learned, uh, you know, a few assorted things on how to obey the rules. When I was a young guy at Red Shield uh, Boys and Girls Club. And now I look around and I see the community and our young people being exposed to good behavior and sports and some arts. It's really a great, great thing. So I'm very excited to be here to be with you in this community. And I just met a young man that I want to dedicate my comments to. Uh, his name is Isaiah Akru. And he's right over here. He's one of this green uh, baseball cap. Isaiah, could you stand up just for a minute and just this young man came here tonight to participate in American democracy. What a great job. Thanks, Isaiah. Thanks, Isaiah. <laughs> He'll be running for office one of these days, I'm sure. Uh, I'm running for governor because I believe that we need to help people get jobs in our community. And we have over 270,000 people out of work right now. And I'm dedicated to both helping those people get good paying jobs and all of our children, all of our children, have an opportunity to have an education to grow up to have middle class jobs, like Isaiah and everybody else in this community. And the reason I feel so strongly about this is I've come up 
knowing working people. Um, I grew up White Center, then we moved out to the North End. I went to Ingram High School, chased my uh, girlfriend for seven years. Caught her, we've now been in a perfect marriage for 39 years. A perfect marriage is a marriage between a husky and a cougar. So we have been in a perfect marriage for 39 years. And I put myself uh, through school driving a bulldozer in Bellevue, uh, driving cement trucks, running jackhammers. I painted houses in Burien. Uh, I went on to prosecute drunk drivers. I've taught to community college classes. I've practiced law. I've represented the Hanford nuclear workers. I know the full scope and breadth of working people in this state of Washington. And I want to tell you, I'm going to get up every single morning in the next several years trying to help the working people in the state of Washington get and keep good middle class paying jobs. That's my commitment to everybody in this room tonight. And I believe, I believe I can help people do this. And the reason is, is that I have both the vision to help create jobs in our state and the experience to help create jobs in our state, and the determination to create jobs in this state. Well, let me tell you why I believe I can help. I have uh, been working for several years now on economic development issues to help build new industries in our state. Let me give you an example of one of them. You know, we created the first technological revolution in this state in aerospace, right, with the Boeing Company. And I grew up with a lot of, I consider myself sort of the Boeing family. My cousins work at Boeing. My best friend was a guy who had a cool job. He had to break the wings of the 727 to see how much they could bend. I thought that was a pretty cool job. I never forget the day I went down on a field trip to SeaTac, and they let me set in a Boeing 707. I thought I was on top of the world. So we led a technological revolution in aerospace. And now we need a governor who will help make sure the aerospace industry stays vibrant and growing in this state. And I'm proud to say to you that it was my amendment on the floor of the House of Representatives that made sure the Department of Defense didn't sell the tanker contract to the French so that we could make sure that we could get that contract right here in the state of Washington. I'm glad we won this contract. It was a great coup for Brian Williams. To make sure that that happened. Now that, obviously, I was not the sole reason that happened. This was a bipartisan effort. We had a lot of people pitching in on this. But we won because the Boeing workers are skilled, they're the most skilled aerospace workers in the world. That's why I'm now committed to making sure we have the next generation of Boeing workers so that we have our students get a good high school education and have the training to become very good aerospace workers. And I'm committed to this. That's why I was excited when I went out to a paint field the other day and I saw these folks in this aerospace training program that I helped get federal financing for so we can replace the Boeing workers who are now retiring. We've got a huge potential for aerospace in, the, in this state, but we've got to make sure we have the skilled people to do that. Not just the machinists, but the engineers as well. And that's why I'm committed to make sure we increase the STEM degrees, science, technology, engineering, and math from our colleges to make sure we expand opportunity. So it is this experience and this vision that leads me to believe that I can help people get back to work. Now, to do this, we've got to make sure that people, our young people, have both education and health care to make sure that they can be fully functioning people in our economy. And I want to mention health care for a minute. Uh, I just met uh, a young woman who's an AmeriCorps uh, worker at the community clinic. Where are you? She's sitting back there. Would you remind me of your name again? Laura. Laura is working at the community clinic. And I am a believer that community clinics can, can be some of the most cost-effective, highest quality way to deliver health care to our families. And I'm proud to say that the very, I think, the very first vote I ever took in the U.S. Congress was establishing the AmeriCorps program 
And I'm happy to see Laura helping the health care of the High Point community. How about a round of applause for her? But AmeriCorps is not enough. We need health care for the people who don't have it. And I'm happy to say that I am the only candidate in this race, the only candidate in the race, who says that every single person in America should have health insurance. And I support that commitment. Now we have some differences between the candidates in this race. And I have to tell you that I am disappointed. I am disappointed that my opponent has filed a lawsuit to try to take away that protection. I think when a woman gets breast cancer, she should be able to get insurance. And I think my opponent is wrong in filing a lawsuit to try to take that away from every single woman in the state. I am going to stand up and hold the right to in the state. I want to address education very briefly. We don't have hours that I'd like to spend with you tonight. Uh, but I believe very strongly that the paramount duty of the state of Washington is the education of our students. And we've got a lot of things we have to do to give every single child a chance at a great education and a shot at a good, well-paid job. I just want to mention some of the things we need to do very quickly. First, we have to put our resources where they are most effective. And we know that some of the best investments we can make with the taxpayer dollar is in early childhood education. To make sure that these children have the ability to get all day kindergarten. To make sure that kids, be, by the time they get to third grade, are ready to read. And to target some of our resources to the children who are at risk that we can identify as early, as early as one, two, three years of age. And when we do this, we are going to help kids succeed so they don't end up in the penitentiaries of this state and on the unemployment lines of this state. This is a first priority that we should be thinking about to get to our kids early. Second, we need to help our teachers improve teacher quality with better mentoring better evaluation systems, and an ability to make sure where there is a substandard teacher, it doesn't take two or three years to remove them from the classroom. When we do this, we are going to have better teaching, which is appropriate. Now, we got some great teaching going on in this, in this state. i got to tell you, I was, I was at Pasco High School uh, a couple months ago, and I saw Pasco High School, what they have done is remarkable. They had a 50% dropout rate a few years ago. They've raised it to over 80% this year with committed principals and committed teachers. We have to end this scandal that one out of every four child is not graduating from high school. We're going to create an expectation that every child graduates from high school when I'm governor of the state of Washington. This ought to be our expectation. And I know that we can do this if we have great principals and great teachers in a community that pulls together. So uh, we'll be rolling out a very comprehensive educational reform package here in the next several weeks, uh, just like we have rolled out our job creation package. And I would encourage people who are interested in this, you can go to jamesley.com. And uh, if you have any thoughts about our package, I'd love to hear it. I want to mention one other thing before I go, and that is that one of the reasons I'm proud of the state of Washington is our diversity. We are a very diverse state. We are welcoming to everybody to bring their talents of whatever ethnic group you represent, whatever faith you represent. We believe in the strength of diversity, and it's one of the reasons I love our state. And I'm happy to say I've supported the Voting Rights Act to make sure that we have adequate representation a shot that diversity in our democracy is the right thing to do. So I want to thank you for being here tonight. I look forward to working with you on education, on health care, on job creation, because I believe this state can move forward on all three of these things if we have a governor who wants to drive forward instead of reverse. We ought to go forward on marriage equality rather than reverse. And I'm the only candidate in the race 
that supports full marriage equality. And I'm proud to say that because this is a state that embraces everyone, no matter what you are or who you are, we embrace your individual privacy. So I look forward to working with you, and uh, we're going to have questions today or tonight. Check are we taking questions? Are we taking questions? Okay.
I'll very quickly just mention a few of them. Um, I was just with a company 40 minutes ago called Energy2. They have developed a technology on how to build ultra capacitors that you can marry with lithium ion batteries and make electric cars run a lot farther. They are a company that came from the physics lab at the University of Washington. And they uh, have some jobs associated with that company. Well, we want to make it easier for the University of Washington and other colleges to spin out businesses when they develop these technologies so they can put people back to work. There's just one idea, many that you will find on my economic plan. Now, what we believe is that we have the capacity to develop clusters of these new industries, aerospace, biotechnology, clean energy, advanced agricultural technologies, and military contracting. And when we do this, it's not just the scientists who get the job, because they create demand for nurses, truck drivers, police officers, firefighters, the whole gamut of jobs. But what we have found is, is that our, our, our great talent set here in Washington is we innovate, we create new things, we build, we invent, we're really good at this. And we need to help them get better in a variety of ways. We've also proposed some tax changes to our tax codes that will help small businesses uh, grow faster. We are certainly going to try to improve the skill sets that these businesses have, people that can actually do these jobs. And we're going to focus on exporting products rather than just importing them. And you ask if I had any experience in this. Yes, uh, the company that uh, I just talked about uh, had received some of the federal investment in this regard. I helped with the tanker contract that's involved with thousands of jobs at Boeing. Uh, I've been active in trying to get better export opportunities for us. One of the things I did very early in my congressional career was get the ability to sell Washington apples into Japan. They wouldn't let us sell our apples into Japan. We were able to knock down that barrier, at least part of it. So I do have experience. I do have a vision. And now all I can do is be governor. I put this to work. Thank you. Outside of the state of Washington, 
to people who are not creating a job inside the state of Washington and taking that money and putting it into the education of our children. So I am proposing a partial solution to that. Now we've got other things we've got to do to save up money for education. And uh, that's the direction I think we ought to head. Thanks for bringing a young talent here. Appreciate it. <laughs> yes. Hi, um, my name is Rashid Mohammed, and I'm a youth that is in Denver High Point. And I wanted to uh, tell you that as you're aware, the budget cuts are going around and shutting most centers down. All, most of these centers are like the homes as teens that are, you know, they have to live with. And if these centers shut down, most of them don't have anywhere to go. And I just want to know if like, you have like, any idea for us minority teens that, you know, have a number of blind degree. Well, first off, I want to I, I want to thank you for being here tonight. I, I really appreciate you sticking up. Where do you go to school? Chief Self. Chief Self. My dad was the first basketball coach there. Wow. <laughs> um, look, if this is a big deal to me. I mentioned I grew up in Mitchell Boys and Girls Club, so I know how effective these centers can be. And I think the important, in answer to your question, we should, be, we should not be shutting these centers down, okay? That's my viewpoint. And the reason is, is because they are so effective in keeping young people on the straight and narrow. When people are in here learning arts, playing basketball, learning languages, associating with adults, they're not getting in trouble. This is one of the best things we can do as a crime prevention effort. And it's one of the best things we can do to keep people in school because they can have some motivation to keep their nose clean and stay in the straight and narrow. So I'm a believer in the effectiveness of these organizations. Now, we have a budget challenge in the state of Washington that is very acute, as you know. And tough decisions are going to have to be made. But I don't think the answer should be by de decreasing the services to our young people. Because, you know, we want to increase the education of our kids, but if a kid's coming to school hungry, homeless, and sick, it's awful hard to educate them. So this suite of services are very important. And that's why I think some of the things that have been proposed, including the Republican budget in Olympia, uh, that has cut until today, they wanted to cut $74 million out of education, <laughs> And slash a lot of the things that will keep our kids healthy and ready to go to school. I want to stick with you, and I want to thank you for being here. Go see us. Okay. Take care of our families. 
So good luck to us all. Thank you.